As ever so often, this one started out as a question. And this time a colleague of mine was asking how I'd pull off, on the one hand, tying a knot in a bow tie or in a bow, and on the other hand, untying it. So like in a gift wrap or on a shoelace, for example. And, you know, I tried thinking of clever ways of pulling this off. But sometimes in Houdini, if you have a decently fast solver, the most straightforward thing you can do is just simulate it. So in this video, we're going to build this, a vellum simulation of this kind of bow here, being pulled tight and then being untied. And to start out, what I did is I did some grunt work and took a broken XLR cable, tied a bow knot into it and tried figuring out where the cable went in 3D space and roughly rebuild it with Houdini 19's new curve tool, which is what you see here. And admittedly, this is not a nice bow tie, but as you'll see in the simulation, it doesn't matter as it will be pulled apart and pulled straight or rather pulled round and thus give more the appearance of a ribbon. We just need an initial state where we make sure that this spline or this curve forming our knot, our initial knot, is not intersecting and is correctly oriented in space. And that's what this is. And I'll provide this spline to you in the scene file. So after we have this initial state here, the first thing I want to do is convert this curve into a polyline with regularly spaced points. I'm going to use the resample node for that. Just switch on the point display and you can see we're getting these points which are spaced a bit too far for my liking. So let's decrease the length here to 0.0175. As ever so often with these types of setups and these types of tutorials, what we're doing, we're not going to go into the theory behind it. So if you want to know how the Vellum Solver works and how to work it, you might want to consider watching one of our premium tutorials on that. And in here, it's more about pulling off this production setup, this initial one. And the values in here, I found them out by trial and error when preparing that setup. And the procedure for that is, well, on the one hand, knowing your solver a bit, so getting a bit of experience with the solver and the values it expects and it works with, and then just trying out values back and forth. So stick with me and just use this length value in here. Next, let's turn this into an initial ribbon using the sweep node and set this one to form a ribbon, which by default is set up to be a bit too big. So we're getting into sections here. So let's dial back the width here, switch off the point display. And then what I want to make sure is that in those areas here and here, we're going to pull on that ribbon. The faces are somewhat parallel to the Z axis or at least not perpendicular to it as here. The lazy and easy way to do that is going down here to the rotation settings of your sweep and applying some roll maybe 50 units, so that both of these areas here are at least not perpendicular to the Z axis. And that also fixed most of the intersections down here. I think we're good with this one as an initial state. Next, I'll create two point groups using a group node, call one pin A, set this to be a point group, and I wanna select the points by a bounding region here. And I'll just move that bounding box here. So I select a few of the starting points here at the end of that ribbon. Let's just copy and paste this node wired up below here and call the second point group here pin B. And in here, I too want to move my bounding box. So I'm selecting just a few end points here on that end of the ribbon like so. And later we're going to use those groups to animate the untying of this knot here by just moving out those points along the X axis respectively and thus pulling on this whole ribbon here. But for now, I want to wire this into a vellum cloth to configure my ribbon as being a piece of cloth, a cloth ribbon. And to tie this knot a bit tighter, what I want to do is I want to simulate the motion of a few plastic fingers by just creating tubes here and here in this area that move outwards a bit and scale up to pull this whole loops tight here. And I do that by creating a few tubes. Let's start with one, which should point in the Z direction. Let's scale down its radius and increase its length a bit to say two units and then give it a few more subdivisions along the columns and the rows, maybe even a bit more, like so. Just for good measure, add vertex normals and let's move that over to this area here. 1.4 units along the x-axis worked for me. Let's copy and paste this tube over here and just move it to minus 0.6 along the x-axis and have it sit here. Let's add a few transforms to animate this. And I want to just move this centroid to the origin and then reset the translation so I can just grab this here and animate it. In this case, I just want to start on frame one, alt click in the translate X here to set first keyframe, then go to frame 72 and set this keyframe to maybe 0.2. So moving it out just a tiny bit, but also I want to scale this up. So on the first frame here, let's set the uniform scale to one. And on frame 72, let's set the uniform scale to three. So getting quite big. And I think what I want to do instead of scaling this uniformly, I only want to scale it on X and Y to not get that Z scale up here. So let's shift 
and control click in here to delete all keyframes, reset the uniform scale to one. And instead, let's keyframe the scale X and Y on frame 72 and on frame one. And on frame 72, let's set scale X to three and scale Y to three and all click in here to again set the keyframes. Let's have a look if that animation did work by just resetting the timeline, toggling real time display and hitting play. And that is working nicely. Let's set up the same thing for the tube number two by attaching a transform node here as well, moving the centroid to its origin and then nulling out the translation again, setting the X translation to zero at the first frame here, then going to frame 72 and moving this over minus 0.2 units like so, keyframing this as well. Let's keyframe the scale as well. Again, one keyframe scale X and Y to one on frame one and on frame 72, I'm gonna set this to three on X and three on Y like so. And again, keyframing this. So this animation, if I play it back, now does this. All right, let's merge those two tubes in here using a merge node, wire in both tubes, and they should work as a collider for our simulation. So they go into the third input slot of our Vellum Configure cloth. On the Vellum Configure cloth constraint here, I wanna set up a few things. Let's drag this out and over so we have more space for the parameters here. And first I would like to visualize the thickness here, which will display a tiny sphere around each of those points here. And I wanna increase that edge length scale to 0.98. So those spheres almost touch so that the cloth does not intersect. Although that doesn't matter that much because we're gonna manipulate this value a few nodes downstream. But for starters, let's stick with that. Then down here, I wanna pin the pin A and pin B group to an animation. I wanna set the pin type to soft and match the animation for later. This is just to make sure that we'll be able to pull those points we selected down here later to untie this knot. Let's scroll down here. As for the stretch, that is looking fine. And in the bend constraint, what I wanna make sure sure here is that my ribbon wants to tend to a status where it has as few wrinkles as possible, but still being flexible. So I have to find a value on the one hand for the bend constraint stiffness that works for that, but also I want to decrease the rest angle. So decreasing a bend's rest angle means a ribbon or a piece of cloth tries to stay straight. And a rest angle scale of zero combined with a stiffness value of 0 0.1 kind of did the trick in my test setups here. One more thing before we start wrangling these attributes here. In the sweep, when I scroll up here, you can see under columns, I can dial in how many subdivisions this ribbon is going to have here. So the more columns I dial in, the more subdivision this has. And what I wanna do in a second is after the vellum cloth constraint here, where the thickness, that means the radius of those individual points gets configured, as well as the rest length, that means the length of the springs connecting those points is, I want to set a uniform value for all springs regarding their length. And I wanna set a uniform value for the p-scale. That means the radius of those individual spheres that form this mesh here. And what that's gonna do, it will push out any points that are close together, meaning that the more columns I dial in here, in the sweep node, the wider our ribbon is gonna be in the simulation as Vellum will try to push out these points in a second by trying to match a few attributes, which I'm gonna set up. For the rendering you've seen, I specified 40 columns here. And in the end, I wanna make sure that all points will be pushed apart this distance that I set here in the resample node here. So this uniform central distance of the points here, this is the spacing that I want to enforce on my swept mesh later. To do that, after the vellum configure cloth. I'll drop down a few point wrangles, point and primitive wrangles that is. Let's start with a point wrangle first. And in here, I wanna set up the P scale. That means the radius, the size of those individual spheres making up this mesh here. That means the points on this mesh here. And these spheres are responsible for collision detection with each other, but also with colliders. So I'm gonna wire the point wrangle in here. And in here, I'll create a float slider. Let's call this one radius. And it's a float slider, which we're gonna call radius. And then in here, what I wanna do after I fix that is I wanna set my points P scale. That's just a Houdini and Vellum intrinsic attribute storing a points radius or the radius of a particle. I wanna set that to be the radius I just read in. And now let's create that slider by clicking here on that icon. And I can see I've got a radius slider here. And in here, I wanna link up the value that I entered here in the length of the resample. So right clicking in here, copy parameter, and then going down here to the point triangle and into that radius slider I just created, right clicking again, and then pasting as a relative reference. However, that's just the distance here, but we're looking for a radius. So we'll have to divide this by two. I could either do that in this expression here or just up here in my code by either multiplying by 0.5 or dividing by two. 
Let's go with a multiplication by 0 0.5 like so. That seems to have worked. And now for my constraints that drive the rest length, that means the length of those connections here that connect those individual points, I want to set a uniform rest length, which is equal to the spacing of my points on the resample node here. And I'm going to do that in this second slot here. Well, I'll attach a primitive wrangle and in here only for the stretch group, not for the bent group. So only for the springs that keep those points apart from each other and do not drive the bending of that ribbon, which are in this stretch group here, do I want to set the rest length. So I'm going to have this primitive wrangle run over the stretch group. And in here again, I want to create a float slider. Let's call this one R length for rest length and it's equal to the float slider we're going to call length. Let's create that slider and then down here, Let's set the rest length attribute to the R length we just read in. Again, same thing as previously, just going to go up here to the resample node, right click in here, copy that parameter and down here in our primitive wrangle, I'm going to paste it in here as a relative reference. So we'll automatically have that filled in as the rest length value here. Okay, let's move those two nodes over here. And finally, drop down a vellum solver. Let's manually wire in the point wrangle in the first, primitive wrangle in the second, and the collider input in the third slot and highlight it. Okay, let's zoom out a bit. And in here, the first thing I want to do is disable the gravity. So no gravity force, setting that to zero. I also want to disable the wind. And for my overall simulation, I found it beneficial to add a bit of velocity damping, 0 0.5 that is. Then I lowered the static threshold to 0 0.2. Nope. 0.1 that is, and also decrease the dynamic scale to 0.02. Then under the main solver tab, I increase the substeps to two to make the collision detection a bit more robust. Sometimes it also requires four substeps, but I think we can get away with only two. Compromise between speed and quality of the simulation here and increase the constraint iteration slightly to 128. Okay, fingers crossed. Let's just simulate this. Okay, so far that seems to be working. However, let's just attach a null after the Valm Solver's first slot here. So we're getting rid of the simulation geometry when viewing that. Now those areas where we're pushing against the bow tie, the ribbon to pull it tight, they seem a bit too regular. So what I want to do after we pull this thing tight is I want to scale back and maybe disable my collider geometry here. So in my original setup, I animated the scale from three down to zero again, starting at frame 100 to 120, I think. But we might, let's just try this here, we might get away with something even cheaper and just switching off the colliders using a switch node, which we'll wire in here, attaching just a simple null to it as a second input. And then let's maybe on frame 100, just switch this one by animating the input from zero on frame 100 and one on frame 101. So we are now switching from geometry to nothing. Let's see how that simulates. So I just reset this and maybe before we start the simulation on the Vellum Solver in the simulations tab, let's increase the cache memory if you can afford it. So the simulation might fit into RAM and doesn't have to recook. So let's simulate this. So that's working nicely up to a point where the ribbon starts relaxing back a bit too much for my taste. In a production setup, I could find a spot that I like, for example, something like this, and just bake out this geometry and use a bunch of constraints to glue my simulation geometry in vellum onto this prefabricated geometry. And then if I start animating the ends tearing apart using a breaking threshold, so this geometry might pull loose from its pre-baked state. However, in this case, I'll just directly start pulling on those ends, maybe around frame 120 here. So let's animate that up here where we created the pin groups A and B by using a transform, which we'll set to work on pin group A only, move its centroid to its origin and then null out the translates again. And on frame 120, let's keyframe all the translations here. Maybe look at this isometrically from the front and then go to frame, I don't know, 170. And let's just move this out here a good bit. Let's have a look at this, how this looks from the side. That's okay. So let's keyframe this at frame 170 and also drop down another transform. This time set to work only on the pin B group. Again, move centroid to origin and null out the translates again and animating this from frame 120. So keyframing the translations on frame 120 and then moving to 170, looking at this from the side again, and then maybe moving it over here. Let's have a look at that. Might be a bit too drastic. Let's do something like 
this maybe and keyframe that again. So now this stream goes into the vellum cloth in here. Just again, want to make sure that in the vellum cloth here under the pin to animation, we've got the pin type set to soft selected both groups, pin A and B, and checked match animation. All right, again, let's select our output null here, reset the scene. Let's zoom in a bit, save this and re-simulate again. And after watching this, I think at the end, I need to pull out those ends a bit further to make sure that loop fully unfolds. I mean, it's nice how that kind of dissipates slowly in the end, but I think it could use a bit of a stronger pull. So again, let's go up here to the transforms and just tweak those last keyframes a bit. So in here, I also made a mistake when setting that keyframe and only set the keyframe on the X axis, which is clearly what I did not want. So let's highlight this and move this down along the Y axis as well. And thus I'll automatically get a bit of a longer, stronger pull, maybe just somewhere around here. And let's try keyframing the whole thing now. On the second translate here, let's maybe also move this down a bit along the y axis and a bit further out along x and keyframe all of those components. And then let's go back to the first frame, visualize our output here, frame this a bit, zoom in, and then again, let's simulate this. So close. Third time is the charm, I'd say. So let me readjust those keyframes where we pull out those ends of our knot here so that it unfolds a bit further. Again, in the transform frame 170, let's just highlight this, zoom out a bit here, and let's move this a good bit further, something like this. Again, let's keyframe all components here, and on our second transform too, let's move this out a good bit. Maybe something like that. Again, keyframing all components here, resetting that scene, and back to our simulation. Let's frame this a bit nicer, and let's re-simulate. Now that's definitely working better. Maybe could need a few additional frames in the simulation. So let's add those just by extending the simulation to maybe 300 frames and we can let this run later. But that's the really simple setup or comparatively simple setup of tying a ribbon knot using Houdini and Vellum. There's not much unusual to it. A few tricks I want to point out. Again, this curve, I just drew manually the input by just looking at the cable that I tied in this way in real life and just tried to figure out where the cable goes. And we're using that sweep here in connection with those two point wrangles where we set the uniform rest length of our distance constraints as well as the uniform p scale on all of our points just to push out all those individual points from the first frame to simulate a wider ribbon than what we stuffed in here and the reason i did it that way is that i drew this knot a bit too tight and also kind of liked the appearance of that expanding ribbon and the wrinkles it gave the whole simulation and then just using those tubes here to pull the knot tighter a bit and those two pin constrained ends here to untie the knot in the end. But that's all there is to it. As I mentioned in these types of tutorials, we don't talk much about the theory behind Vellum or the Vellum solvers. If you're interested in more of that stuff and want to learn more Houdini using in-depth courses, or you just plainly want to support us, consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone already supporting us, thanks so much, folks. It is through your help that Entagma in this form is possible at all. And a very special thank you goes out to important looking pirates, rodeo effects, side effects, and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much, folks. And as always, tag us, send us a link. We're always intrigued to see what you folks cook up. And until next time, as always, it is cheers and goodbye.